Uh, next, we'd like to invite Dr. Cowich to the, back to the podium to tell us about Viabon, when and why. Again, I'd like to thank the organizers for allowing me to uh, present today um, on the stent graft. Um, as far as uh, disclosures, I don't have anything to disclose uh, concerning this talk. So, <clears throat> what are the uses, the most common uses for using Viabon or covered stent? Um, what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at SFA stenosis, and they've, they've had the three trials done, uh, Viper, the Gore Viper study, the Viastar study, a 25 centimeter study, and as well as comparing it to um, a prosthetic bypass grafts. We're also going to look at Reline, uh, which was their instance restenosis study that's still currently enrolling. And uh, there's a couple of off-label uses that we're going to talk that we going to talk about uh, today. One is for the treatment of popliteal aneurysms, and then uh, we also use them for uh, bailout for perforations, um, which is actually, um, if anyone was at the live case yesterday with uh, Andre, when he, uh, he had some small perforations that he used uh, Vibe on the cover with. Uh, so the device is actually a nitinol-based stent that has a PTFE tubing in, in between. Uh, and then there's some heparin coated, uh, active coated on the surface. Uh, it comes in several lengths. It comes in uh, 2.5, 5, 10, 15, and then their newest length is 25 centimeters. Uh, it comes in diameters from 5 to 13 millimeters. So they recently also added four gold radio pick markers onto the graph to allow for visibility, to allow for better placement. Uh, this is mo found on the smaller devices that were more, most commonly used in the SFA and popliteal. So when we compare the covered stent to the bare night null stents, we see that the Viabon co covers the disease. So it covers, it creates an bypass, a, a, bi a prosthetic bypass covering the disease, whereas a bare night null stent has an open cell scaffold that allows for a uh, structural uh, architecture to uh, keep the vessel open, but it doesn't really cover the disease. So this this changes how the restenosis occurs for Viabon and bare metal stents. What we see restenosis occurring in Viabon is that it occurs at the edges. It's, it's focal stenosis at the edges, either proximally or distally, whereas bare nitinol uh, stents have diffuse instant restenosis uh, throughout the stent. We've seen that the lesion length that we'll see some of the data that in Viabon, the patency of the stent is not affected by the lesion length. So there's no, there's no difference in whether you put a 10 centimeter uh, or a 25 centimeter um, stent, it's still, uh, the patency is the same. This is different than bare nitinol stents where we've seen that the patency is dependent on the lesion length. Again, the other concern that people have is stent fractures. The, the reported stent fractures for Vibon is actually very rare. Um, this, compared to bare nitinol stents, is different as opposed from something as maybe high as the live stent to um, where something that would be almost uh, on the lower side of stent fractures. So in the Viper clinical study, this was a single arm prospective multicenter study, which they looked at 119 limbs. Uh, they looked at the primary patency we're using duplex. They had independent core analysis, and the average lesion length was uh, 19 centimeters. 58 of these uh, were to chronic total occlusions, and we see that the primary patency at 12 months was 73%. The secondary patency was 92%. We saw that basically the main, one of the main things that came out of this study was that patency uh, improved when the device was not oversized. So if you oversized the, it by more than 20% proximally, this affected the patency. So what we see is that when you compared the oversized, uh, the, uh, the, un, the appropriately sized Viabonds to the oversized Viabonds, you see that it, definite, that it affects the uh, primary patency. So the other, the other Compare, the other trial they ran was the Vistar, which is they were comparing uh, Viabon to bare metal stents. And this uh, had multiple stents, Life Stent, uh, Protégé, Everflex, Smart. So th what they looked at was they looked at primary patency at 12 months, again, by looking at PSVR, and then um, they looked at technical success. And 
what they did was they looked at 66 patients in the Viabon arm and 63 patients in the bare metal stent arm. The lesion characteristics were the same for both uh, arms. The primary patency at 12 months in looking at um, the lesions, uh, just all lesions, we see that the Viabon primary patency was 78% compared to the bare metals uh, stents were 54%. When you actually expand, look at closer at lesions that were greater than 20 centimeters, we see an even bigger difference between the Viabon having a prior patency of 73% and bare metal stents dropping down to 33%. The, uh, there was no significant difference in the safety endpoints. Uh, the restenosis occlusions, they had fewer restenosis in the Viabon group. There was no difference in the occlusions or incidence of acute limb ischemia between Viabon and bare metal stents. So when we looked at the Viostar conclusions, we saw that we had, they had better primary patency at one year than the uh, bare metal stents. The primary patency was definitely amplified in when the stent lengths were greater than 20 centimeters. Uh, when uh, when we looked at, there was no statistical difference in occlusions or incidence of acute limb ischemia. So the next study we looked at was when they launched their 25 centimeter uh, Viabon. They looked at uh, for primary, uh, primary patency, and they saw that there was no diff that the primary patency and secondary patency in the, in the uh, 25 centimeter arm uh, didn't, make, uh, didn't have any major drop off in the, the re prior reported primary patency and secondary patency as well, their freedom from TLR as well did not uh, change any. When you compare this to bare metal stents and lesion lengths, we see that the bare metal stents do very well in short lesions, but as uh, the longer the lesion length goes, the patency, the primary patency drops. We see that the Viabon, it, again, it, the primary patency is not determined by, it's not affected by lesion length. We've, they've also looked at Viabon comparing it to prosthetic femoral popliteal bypasses. And what they've seen is that throughout the first, second, third, and fourth year, that there's no, not much difference between the Viabon and the use of uh, prosthetic bypasses. So the, the, the patencies are actually about the same. So in looking for Viabon for complex SFA lesions, We've seen that they have prior patency over bare metal stents. The restenosis rate is uh, length independent. There's low reported fracture rates and there's similar patency to prosthetic FEMPOP bypass. One of, some of the key components to take away from when uh, deploying Viabonds is proper sizing. Don't oversize by, by, uh, by more than 20%. Consider using two stent sizes if there's a big size mismatch in the vessel so that you don't oversize or undersize. And if you need to put two stents in overlapping by at least one centimeter, try to stent normal to normal. Uh, the risk of acute limb ischemia in the study was actually less than one, was 1% 1 and not statistically different from bare metal stent. The, uh, if you have proximal SFA disease, try to land the, at, land the stent right up to the ostium of the SFA origin. However, don't cover the profunda. Uh, and then um, post dilate using moderate to high pressure inflations. Uh, one centimeter inside the stent edges. Try not to, uh, try not to stand, uh, balloon angioplasty at the stent edges because that's where most of the restenosis occurs. I get one, at least one vessel runoff uh, is recommended at, uh, that at least one year of DAP should be utilized. Uh, the best way to follow these stents is to uh, use duplex ultrasound every three months in the first year and then every six months after that. Uh, most of the, uh, most of the restenosis when it does occur does not have much clinical symptoms. So if you can uh, identify on duplex ultrasound using the P uh, SVR, then you're able to treat the restenosis at an earlier time. So Vibon for bare metal for instant restenosis, uh, the Reline uh, study, which is currently undergoing, looking at primary patency at 12 months. Uh, some of the um, so again, so what they're so far randomized in one-to-one -one fashions: 39 and 44 patients. Patient demographics was the same between Vibon and PTA. Lesion characteristics were similar. Primary patency for Viab for Viabon compared uh, compared to just balloon angioplasty for instant restenosis. Primary patency was 75% for Viabon. Just balloon angioplasty was 28%. Freedom from TLR. There's again 80% freedom from TLR using Viabon versus 42% with just bare metal with uh, balloon angioplasty. 
Uh, so there is statistic. This, uh, even though it was done to a year, they have looked out to tw two years, and this uh, this difference has been maintained throughout uh, for two years. So there were no serious adverse events at 30 days from either either arm. They did look at 31 patients in in the trial, uh, of which they were ran. Uh, they looked at for fracture and uh, for stent fracture. Um, there were zero stent fractures identified uh, in the device. So when we looked at what the Reline clinical study showed was improved patency for instant restenosis compared to balloon angioplasty, and this extended up to two, two years, 80% freedom from TLR and zero fractures in the sub-analysis. This is a case of Dr. Uh, the Peter Sukas LMA Barrow. You can see that there's a long instant restenosis, re uh, returns at the, at the popliteal. He was able to cross it using a prolapse wire. He treated it pre with laser. He then uh, post-laser, this is the findings. He then uh, put in, in a distal protection device. He then treated with Viabon followed by PTA. And on the post picture, you could see that there is some distal embolization. I tend to use for most of my instant restenosis distal embolization. And then here we see that post-laser, we see wonderful results. Thank you all.